Now, this will be an unusually quick turnaround for me because I was actually filming this yesterday. The day this drops, I would have filmed this yesterday because this is hot off the press. This is a video I did not think I would ever make or at least make in the next few years. I thought my Jamaican journey had come to an end, but I have to give a massive shout out to longtime follower and subscriber uh, and member Mark Thomas. Thank you very much, Mark, for sending this story to me. He has sent me uh, a big dram of Denison Merchant Reserve, which is supposedly the only rum dedicated that was created dedicated to the Mai Tai. It is not available in the UK. I don't even know where it's available, to be honest. I know it's available in the US because it's a US product. But outside of the US, I have got absolutely no idea. So I've got no idea of the prices, no idea how much you would expect to pay. So this is definitely one for you US guys. Please, please, in the comments below. Uh, two things, actually. Let us know the price in dollars. And then we could translate like that. And I'll add a bit on because obviously UK duty and stuff like that. But I also want you guys in the US to let me know your thoughts and feelings on this. Is this for you the ultimate Mai Tai rum? One rum Mai Tai. I'll go into it in a little bit. I've got a little bit of uh, knowledge to give you. But as I also promised, there's a bonus coming up. Now, this won't be the ultimate moth it might be. <laughs> I've got propositioning this as or positioning this as the one rum Mai Tai. Mark has also sent me uh, a dram of... Appleton, 21-year-old. In the UK, it's literally about £160. So I'm going to track that. I'm going to have a little sip of that. See if it is my favourite sip of rum. That won't come into a, a Mai Tai rum. I'm not even going there. But it's a favourite Jamaican sip of rum. That might work. I don't know. I have I don't think I've ever had it, if I'm being brutally honest. I've just ignored it. And as this is a bonus video, I've got another little bit of housekeeping for you as well because I have got some more news. And you will see... Yeah, Eagle Eye stuff actually restocked the Worthy 109. Um, I decided that that was going to be my restock out of all the rums. Hamden 8, uh, I love Hamden 8. I, I, for what I do, cocktails and that, I just cannot justify that as a cocktail rum. Uh, and that will become apparently clear uh, over the next sort of month or so why I've chosen not to restock that. But in, in other news... If you loyal followers, if you remember right back to the start of this uh, journey, Jamaican rabbit hole that I went down, I said there was a rum that I hoped that I would get in time, but I didn't think it would happen. I, I was there. I was there or thereabouts. And that was um, the Worthy Park Select. It comes in a bottle, much like that. It has been out for God knows how long, but not in the UK. And still to this moment in time, it is not listed anywhere in the UK. So I'd given up hope. So I'd approached San Kong a few times for Worthy Park, and he said it should be there, et cetera, et cetera. But it's never listed anywhere for sale. However, again, I need to reach out, and so I would give a shout-out to the importers to the UK, Spirit Cartel, because they reliably inform me it is in the UK, and they have stocks. And I think it's probably down to them. They've actually told no one it's, it is in stock. So the likes of in the UK, Master of Malt Whiskey Exchange, Royal Malt Whiskeys, anyone like that, any of the big online retailers probably haven't ordered it yet. So I have got a bottle of Worthy Park at Select, which should be, I, I think it's a, from memory, I think it's a 40% ABV rum. Uh, but from tasting it over a year ago now, nearly a year to the day uh, ago that I first ever tasted this, and I fell in love with the rum. So that might be a really good kind of head-to-head -head with Zymaka. There is a bottle of that reserved for me. Spirit Cartel are going to give me a bottle, but I've got to wait. Probably by the time of filming now, that'll be two weeks because I'm not actually collecting it until next week at Rumfest. So waffle and housekeeping out the way. Let's dive into this. Dennis and Merchant Reserve. I'm so, I've had a little whiff. I'm so looking forward to this because I just I'm on I'm on the Denison website. I'm just going to read you for you UK viewers that have got absolutely zero idea of what this is. I'm just going to read you a little bit of blurb on direct from the Denison website of this. So, uh, Merchants Reserve centuries ago, when merchants sailed home from the Caribbean trade routes, they would blend their Caribbean aged rums uh, and reserve and reserve in finest blends to sell throughout Europe as Merchants Reserve. 
Denison Merchants Reserve is named after this time on a tradition. So that's where the name comes from. Uh, Denison Merchants Reserve is a blend of small batch Caribbean rums, including plumber style Jamaican pot still rums, and a rare component of rum grand arone from Martinique. Now, uh, the next sentence I'll give you, the aged components are aged up to a year. So this is not an eight-year-old rum. This will probably have very young rum in it as well, but the biggest rums in this, well, the oldest rums in this are up to eight years old. And they aged in those rums are aged in ex-bourbon barrels, yielding, yielding unparalleled smoothness, blah, blah, blah. That's marketing. Um, right. Merchant's Reserve is the first historically accurate blend. Uh, I've lost my place now. First historic accurate blend of rums used in Trader Vic's Mind Time to be sold commercially. Now, let's just dive into here a bit. Because, because I don't actually know what goes in it. And this is where you've got to read the line and re read between the lines with marketing spiel because a blend of small batch Caribbean rums, including a uh, Jamaican plumber and the Martinique Grand Arone, including, is that it? it? Has this got, you know, has this got Pu Puerto Rican rum? Has it got Trinidadian rum? Has it got, you know, uh, I, would, I would guess from actually the taste, I have had a little taste. I'll let you into a little secret there. I've had, had a little taste. I would guess from the taste, it may it may actually include some Demerara rum in there because this was not what I was expecting at all, but I'm not going to give any more games away uh, until I dive in. A couple of things to also point here as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you've heard Martinique, you will naturally assume, if you've got a little bit of knowledge, that that might be sugar cane juice rum. Now, what Grand Arome is, Grand Arome is actually molasses-based rum from uh, Martinique, and that is probably Martinique's version of a high ester molasses rum to compete with jamaica so this is not sugar cane juice this is just a high ester molasses rum from uh, legalion legalion in martinique who produces grand aromes so that's what that part is now i've got to take mark and his word that this is actually denison merchants reserve in here and not like a mix of el dorado 12 year old or or, or something like that because as I said, this is not what I was expecting at all. This is fruity. This is, it, it smells rich. Uh, caramel kind of notes. They're, they're those sort of dried fruit notes on here. Do I get what I would interpret funk off that? Not really. Um, I, I don't really even get sort of banana. I get a little bit of tropical fruits. Uh, and I relate that more than the mango papaya root. Um, I don't even really get pineapple on this, but I definitely don't get the banana, which you would naturally assume uh, from Jamaica. I was smelling, if genuinely blind smelling, I'm going Demerara rum for that. I'm 100% going Demerara. It doesn't even remind me of, like, as in I've, I've spoken about this uh, a few times over this series, um, like Appleton. Appleton don't have that funk. They just have a lovely sort of palm column blend going on. Uh, and not what I associate with Jamaica. This this is identical, but it's got more of those richer, caramello, caramelized, woodier notes to it. I would 100% pick this as Demerara rum. Now, on the taste, I'm really impressed. I like this. I've seen a review of this in the past. This is not a neat sipping rum. I think it is. I, I really like that. Um, I've just had to have a quick glance over at the ABV and that 43% ABV. And for me, it does punch a little bit higher than that. I think it's because of the peppery alcohol, it's pep peppery sort of cinnamony bite that is just on the roof of my tongue, on the top of my tongue, uh, not the roof of my mouth, the top of my tongue. It leaves a layer of that sort of peppery tingle over there, which brings about a little bit of heat. Vanilla, caramel, very faint tropical fruit in there. More sort of dry fruit, raisins, sultanas, maybe prunes, fig prunes, that kind of stuff. That inherent, if you're like Mummy Barman, used to make Christmas cake, you know, and get all those dried fruits ready kind of, what, a year in advance in the old school days. But, you know, a two or three months in advance and that sort of fruit cake mixture, that's kind of what that reminds me of. As I say, there's a little bit, as, as that sort of peppery bite kind of dials off, there is a little bit of 
grassy herbaceousness to it, but not what I would interpret as funk. I really don't interpret this as a funky realm. But two things come in here because that for me is probably going to be a fantastic cocktail rum. And actually, I can't wait to try that in a Mai Tai. I'm not convinced it's what I like the Mai Tai to be. And that will be interesting to put that against sort of uh, the Worthy 109 in there. But I can totally appreciate already without even putting it in the Mai Tai. I can totally appreciate why. But why this was created. I can totally appreciate why people use El Dorado 12. Maybe I've seen people that do a one run blend with El Dorado 12 and people that do a two run blend using El Dorado 12. El Dorado 12 is a big Mai Tai run for a lot of people. And I can understand why, because this does, you know, it does give me shades of that. All right, not as long aged, not as sort of oomph as maybe El Dorado 12, but it's definitely got more to it than what I would say El Dorado 8 has. But if I had access to this, I know full well that I'm using that in a lot of my cocktail uh, breakdowns that I do on the other channel with Tiki Cocktails. I know that this is going get, to get, get come for a lot in that blended aged rum category. You know, you think of the rums that it plays with, plays alongside in that category. Your El Dorados, your, your Barbados rums, your Jamaican rums, your Appleton 8s and all that sort of stuff. Appleton 12s, probably, Appleton 12 being the next one, but Appleton 8, your Chairman's Legacy. This for me gives me a load of, actually, do you know what? I've just got a faint nod of banana. Then right Right at the back, bear in mind, so what, I haven't had a sip for this for all, a couple of minutes. It's that length is that. This has got a really long finish to it, by the way. Really long. Um, I, honest, genuinely now, I, I would use this a lot as my mixing rum for cocktails. I, I can just tell straight away. Cocktails is kind of my thing. I know kind of what I'm looking for when I do cocktails and break them down and kind of those flavours. I would cane bottles of this. I just, especially if I had a bar or anything like this, if something like this was available in the UK market, I dare say a lot of cocktail bars, a lot of rum bars in the UK would stop this and use this in cocktails. So here we go. One rum Mai Tai test. You can see I pulled out all the big guns. As I said at the top, I haven't got any more hand than eight year old here. For me, I'd. A year from now, if, I, if I'm more flush, I might restock a bottle. I don't know. But this moment in time, I don't think I will. So, I, you know, I did the fourth one just to kind of remind me. I've got Smith & Cross out there. And I've gone through this. And Smith & Cross, for me, is in a one-run mind type, is the weak link still. You know, I haven't changed my opinions of this. It's all, all the same sort of batches here, all ABV adjusted and all that. Even... And you know what? I even made a mistake when making them because I did use the same amount of rum for each of them. I thought, oh, that's strong compared to the Design Macca because Design Macca is, what, 43% ABV? I can never remember. It's 43, yeah, 43 compared to 57. So ABV adjusted. Design Macca still gives me more. It still gives me a lot more than the Smith & Cross. A hell of a lot more. And people, I've had this conversation in the comments recently. You know, people think Smith & Cross is a funky high ester rum. If you look at the ester level, and it's not out there officially from what I can see, but I think people have done this scientific test on this. If you look at it, on those scientific tests, Zymaca does have a higher ester level than what Smith & Cross does. I think where people go wrong in what they miss is that Smith & Cross is a lot stronger in ABV. So they take that higher ABV and interpret that as a, as this kind of higher ester rum. It's not. The ester level in it, uh, supposedly, is a lot a little bit less than Zymaca. But for me, Zymaca just punched us through. It was like for like in that, that I'm going Zymaca all day long. However, that Worthy Park just delivers in everything I want. Because it's got that bit of higher ABV, because it's been aged in char heavily charred barrels, I love those notes in a one-run Mai Tai. And I appreciate that is not for everyone's palates. I completely get that. But for me, when I'm making my ties, why well, I use OFTD quite a bit in, in like a two-run blend, 
because I want those richer, more robust nugs that come through. So for me, for one run my I still is that uh, kind of worthy 109. It's why I picked it, is why I'm not going to bother restock the, uh, the hand and eight year old. Now, in a two run blend, you know, hand and eight year old in that, maybe, maybe the supercharged, maybe the go to all star sort of um, one run my type, or sort of a blend of a my type. But I think, you know, for me, having tried it now, I think the Zymaka and blends with, you know, even 15 mils, so 30, um, where are we? 45 mil of 109 and 15 mil Zymaka really does work for me. So to come onto this Denison Merchant Reserve, it is a fantastic, fantastic Mai Tai. It really is. I'm not overly convinced as well. I just want it. I understand why people love it. I really do. But then I understand why people will use maybe a two run blend or a three run blend because I don't think this delivers in what I personally want from a one run Mai Tai. It's a cracking run. I just want that little bit of extra body. Maybe a higher ABV would have done it. Maybe 46, 47% ABV might have worked. I don't think, I don't know. I've Having never tasted, obviously, the original Mai Tai, that might be as close to the original Mai Tai as, as we get. It might be, but times change, palates change, rums change. I, oh, I would stock the Denison Merchant Reserve, I 100% would, because I think it's going to have a big, big role to play in cocktails. But for me, at this precise moment, with one rum to come, maybe in two, three weeks' time, the worthy part select, you know, worthy going against worthy, I, I've got to stick to worthy park 109. I, I just fallen in love with this, and I think this is a belting, belting my tie. Now, just to finish this video off, as Mark sent me this through, I'll attach it here. I'm not going to do the video in its own right for this. The Appleton 21-year-old. £160 in the UK. Uh, I don't think it's a run that I will ever buy a bottle of. I, I don't think. <laughs> I might say, yeah, I might absolutely fall in love with it. And just that. But I can't give you any more, any more details than that. Again, around the world, you give me, I haven't even done the price comparison to that. I'll back him up on screen. But I, I don't know what the price comparison is. The US, around the world, you give me your prices. Let me know what's going on. Right. On the nose. Oof. Wow. <laughs> you can tell that's longer age. Jesus. That is like soggy, wet barrels with a little bit of dried fruit on it. And glue. A lot of glue coming off there. I'm literally just poured this. I haven't smelled it. I haven't prepped or anything like this. These are my first kind of impressions. Definitely glue, soggy, wooden, wet barrels. Yeah, I, I, that's that's really all I'm getting on that, to be honest. There is that, there is that sort of dry, fruity vibe off there. Do I relate that as an Appleton rum? Not really. I don't, you know, there's nothing in there that goes makes me like light bulbs go off go oh yeah that's Appleton that smells like Appleton it, it's kind of that higher glue kind of vibe that you know that that's what it is um yeah nothing nothing really else going on there right let's dive in for a taste I've just had to flick over to the the website um to get the ABV forty three percent ABV. Um, hopefully a lot of you will know my palette and my penchant for younger rums. Is this a rum that I would go out and buy? No. Um, there, there is nothing remotely enjoyable on that for me. There is nothing that's lighting my eyes up that's going, oh, wow, that tastes amazing. That's just musty it's soaked wood it is just you know it's rum soaked <laughs> in wood that's all I can really give you I'm going to say pretty thin I'm, I'd be if I bought a bottle of that I'd be massively disappointed 
I've got, I, I haven't got any 21 year old rums here, but for me, Dawley's 14, um, even Dawley's 12, El Dorado 15. I'm just trying to think what other longer age rums I've got up here. So even some of the Havanas, the Havana 11 and all that, give, give me more, more body, more oomph on the rum. And obviously, I don't think it has, but I might have a little bit of those I should have found it, but sure as hell with the um, uh, the uh, the Dawleys 12 and 14. I'm not actually 100% sure about the Eldorado 15, but it's, yeah, I'm, well, um, how do I sum this up? Do I get fruit? I get musty, vague hints of dried fruit. I get, I'm wood. It is wood. It is literally soaky, soppy, soppy? So, what's the word? So, sodden, damp, wood. Uh, that, for me, is not an enjoyable experience. I would not think, oh, I'm going to have a glass of that tonight. Um, there is nothing interesting on there. There is no... Would I pick that as... I think, yeah, I'd pick that as rum. Um, it's got a mouthfeel. It's got that sort of nose. And it's got that. I'm picking that as rum and not whiskey or anything like that. But there's nothing on that that excites me. And goes, oh, wow. And takes me on a journey of flavours. It's just like, this is long aged in wood. Um, yeah. No, thank Mark. Thank you very much for, for kind of sending this through to me. Um, my first and um, pop, well, I'll finish out, but possibly my first and last taste of Appleton 21 year old. Um, cheers. <laughs>